Adobe Brick and Making 101. This is a, a kind of a quick introduction to Adobe brick making for the McCann blog. I know that Quinn and Tim were very interested and didn't get a chance to make any bricks. So Pia is going to make a short little movie about how we do it. Anyway, in the first case, what we have over here is we have soils that are separated. We have the clay soil and we have the sandy silt sort of soil. So those are the two main piles. We've got Vincent over there waving his hand in the, in the, in the skidster. He's got a a batch of adobe mix going right now. In front of him is actually cement. I couldn't get any of the asphalt emulsifier, so we're using uh, Portland cement as our stabilizer for the bricks. It should help waterproof them a little bit. And over here is our first batch of bricks of the day. So these are our forms. We have them laid out on craft paper, which helps absorb the water away from the bricks and does not create clumpy bricks from adhering to the uh, soil on the bottom. So this is the forms that we're going to pour next and we'll move these forms. We need to have absolutely flat ground. This is a little bit bumpy so we've got odd shaped bricks as you can see which have to be scraped off and carved. But in any case what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to where the skidster's at and we're going to mix up a batch and Pia will show you kind of pictures of the batch as we as we get close to uh, Adobe Mint. Uh, through trial and process or trial and error we learned how basically to make the mix the best. Basically start with about about half, a little more than a half a barrel. There he is, the wild Sasquatch. We caught him on tape. <laughs> but in any case uh, what we do is about a half a barrel of water and the Portland cement goes into the water so that it mixes up very well. The clays go in and actually that's what Vincent is mixing up right now is the clays because it takes a little more time to dissolve them to make them available. So what we have now in the mix is, is clay, water, and Portland cement. So let's have a look at that and then we're going to put the sandy silt in which will finalize the cement. Now what we have is we have the the water, the Portland cement, and the clayish material, which is basically mixed up ready for the sandy silt. So this is uh, actually a, a bucket that is used, it's called a scoop and mix, it's used for, for cement pouring normally, but in this case we're using it for adobe mix. There's the machine operator, a youngest expert in the northwest, a very capable skidster operator. Right behind us we have the, the paddle of the Portland cement here. And then over here is the, the sandy, sandy silt that we're gonna that we're gonna mix up. Actually, we need to have about 60 tons of dirt to make bricks for the wall that we're building out in front. And this is the start of the, the sifted soil. In any case, what I've learned is that this is a labor-intensive process. The wall is not going to be built this year either. It's going to get start on it. bit of it mixed up.
that this isn't completely flat, and there's still rocks and things. I basically flatten out this area a little bit, or put the forms down. I need to build different lengths of forms so that the actual bumps in the earth and stuff like that don't influence shaping my bricks. So, and how many bricks do you can make in one batch? That holds about two and a half yards, three yards of material, and we can make about 30, about 30 bricks of that. tub and we do this process all over again. And these are sun baked so after a day I will carve the edges off just like I was doing right here and I'll set them on end so that the surface area dries quicker. And then uh, once they dry out I transport them out with my skipper bucket out to the wall where they'll be put in place and uh, and they go into the wall. This is actually where the entrance to our property is, and this is the, the footer that we're laying the bricks on right here. And uh, as Tyler was here last year when we dug out to about 18 inches down and filled with three-quarter minus so that 
hopefully is this wall will not heat. And still haven't solved, solved the problem of the tree, but in any case, the, the wall is going to be where the footer is at. If you look down there, that's, that's also where the wall is going to be at. So in any case, let's go on down to where we've just started to kind of learn how to put the bricks down. It's not rocket science, none of this is rocket science. I've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years, so there's enough information available on how to do it. Very early in the process, <clears throat> don't have ways of actually storing or even moving bricks efficiently. But in any case, these are bricks that are out here uh, that will be used, and they're basically ready to go. Um, and uh, here's some bricks on this side that we will not use. But this is the beginning. Actually, Pia, from the outside, looks better. But this is the beginning of an adobe wall. And uh, basically, we use the same stuff that we mix up with to, uh, to set the, the wall together. And what I've done here is put basically a wire mesh, which both, both fortifies the wall and also allows a stucco, a stucco mesh to be put over top of it. And that stucco, I will probably stucco this because it's not waterproof enough. But once we get that stucco coating on, this wall should never really deteriorate. And we've got it off the water. There's no way water can get to it, so if it's stuccoed up nice, this thing should last for 100 years. We'll see. But in any case, this, uh, this is the beginning of a corner, and, uh, and we're going to start this way and, and probably do the corners first. And then once we get uh, good at doing the bricks and stuff, we'll build towards the center, and the center entrance will be the best bricks that we know how to make. There it is, Adobe Brick and Making 101.